All right, today we are going to continue with describing shapes and objects um, that can help us to understand the world and solve problems. Today we are going to focus on 2D shapes, describing and demonstrating an understanding of the attributes, the different things that we can say, such as the number of sides, the number of vertices, the length of sides, um, how they intersect, how they meet, that kind of thing, to describe 2D shapes. We can describe a shape by telling about its attributes. These are some of the different things we call the attributes of the shape. Uh, one could be the length of the sides. So these shapes have some sides that are the same length. In fact, this uh, top horizontal side and the bottom horizontal side are the same length. We often use hatch marks to show equal length. So these had two lines and two lines, meaning they are the same. This has one line and one line, meaning those are the same. Same thing here with this parallelogram. These two are equal length, and these two are equal length. When all sides have the same length, um, they are actually called a regular polygon. So this would be a regular square. This would be a regular hexagon because it has six sides. You just need to be able to describe the, the length of the sides and say that they are all equal. Um, when we talk about the sides, we may talk about how they intersect at the vertex. The vertex is the corner. So intersecting lines, remember if they continue, they would intersect. And then these would actually not only intersect, they would be perpendicular. These, however, would just intersect. So the sides intersect on each of these. All right, continuing on, um, this is the connect section of lessons one and all the way to four. Uh, so it's a, a number of connect sections that you can refer to if you'd like to. Here we're discussing parallel lines. Um, as we see, these two are parallel lines. The two horizontal sides are parallel, all the same distance on each side. And the vertical lines, ooh, not vertical because they're not quite straight up and down, um, but the two side lines are also uh, parallel. They are the same distance apart. Here we have these two lines as being parallel. And you can see we use arrows here to indicate that lines are parallel. So when you see that little symbol, you can tell they are parallel. If there is no symbol, you can always use a ruler to check and make sure that the lines are in fact the same distance apart. This shape has no parallel lines. None of them are running right beside each other. When we label a shape, um, we often label each vertex or each corner with a different capital letter. And then when we name them, we write them in alphabetical order. So this would be triangle A, B, C. Um, this also helps us to name the sides. So we could say side A, B is intersecting side BC, and that gives us a very clear idea of which parts of the shape that we are talking about. Here we have a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral, remember, is any four-sided shape, and we've labeled it MNPQ, uh, so our quadrilateral name would be quadrilateral MNPQ. It has four sides. We could say that side MN is parallel to side QP, um, they would not intersect. Side MN and side NP would intersect at vertex N, so it tells you exactly where they're intersecting using those letters. Those letters help us be very specific, um, so there's no question about what we are talking about. Now, let's use some of our vocabulary to describe this picture on the wall. Um, if the picture is positioned correctly, so not offside, not crooked, when it's straight, the, both the top and the bottom edges are horizontal, the side edges are vertical. Um, we could say that the horizontal edge and the vertical edge where they meet is perpendicular, gives us that right angle. We could say that the horizontal edges are parallel, the vertical edges are parallel. When two sides of any shape intersect and make a right angle, they are perpendicular. All of these shapes have perpendicular sides. They have a right angle, which is an L-shaped corner. Um, this square and the rectangle both have four. Um, 
this trapezoid only has two. And this shape is a hexagon because it has six sides. It's not our traditional hexagon, but it is still a hexagon. It has six sides. It's hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F. And here we could say that AF is perpendicular to FE. So that would be right there. It's perpendicular. Um, to write that, we could write AF and then this symbol is perpendicular to FE. Also, AF is perpendicular to AB. We can always use the corner of a square or even the side of our page to check if the sides are perpendicular. You would just line it up in there and see that in fact it is perpendicular. Equal sides and quadrilaterals is another thing that we could discuss. A square has four equal sides. The diagonals of a square are equal. The diagonals are actually also perpendicular. A rectangle has two pairs of opposite sides that are equal in length. These are equal to these sides. The diagonals of a rectangle are also equal, but they would make a intersecting line. A rhombus also has four equal sides. It is um, like a square but tipped sideways. The diagonal of a rhombus make perpendicular lines. A parallelogram has two opposite equal sides, so the sides that are parallel are equal in length. We could discuss parallel sides on quadrilaterals. All squares, rectangles, parallelograms, and rhombuses have two pairs of equal sides, so this is one pair. A pair needs to have two. This is the other pair. That pair has two, so it only has two pairs of parallel sides, not four. Be careful. Two equal sides making one pair, two equal sides making one pair, and same for the parallelogram and the rhombus. A trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel lines. This is the traditional looking um, trapezoid, but this is also a trapezoid. It has one set of parallel lines, and the other uh, two sides are not parallel. Lastly, we have a kite. A, we could discuss the adjacent sides on a quadrilateral. Adjacent means beside each other, so we'll be discussing those two sides or those two sides. In this case, each pair of adjacent sides are equal. They are the same length, so these two sides are the same length. These two sides are the same length. Same happens with this kite. These two sides are the same length, and these two sides are the same length, and you can see that also from the hatch marks. Uh, remember, if they both have one, they're the same length. They both have two, they're the same length. Lastly, we could also discuss um, how many of their adjacent sides are perpendicular. Here we have four right angles. All four sides are perpendicular. Um, remember, it would be just extending that line and seeing that, yes, they would in fact cross in a perpendicular manner for all four corners. Let's discuss symmetry now. A shape is considered symmetrical if it has one fold line of symmetry where both sides are exactly equal. So if we were to look back at this, this would have both sides exactly equal. That would be one line of symmetry and yes, it would be a symmetrical shape. Some quadrilaterals have no lines of symmetry. There's no way that we could cut any of these shapes in half and still have two equal halves. A rectangle is kind of tricky. Sometimes we think it does, in fact, have two sides that are equal, but if we were to fold them on top of each other, they wouldn't actually match each other. They would overlap, but they would not match. Some quadrilaterals have one line of symmetry. These two halves are the same. These two halves are the same. These two halves are the same. Some quadrilaterals will even have two lines of symmetry. And one quadrilateral a square has four lines of symmetry from each corner as well as between each half. If you were to fold it in half each of those ways, both sides would be right on top of each other. They would be exactly equal. All right, so we have now discussed a number of different attributes of two-dimensional shapes. You're going to use these attributes now to describe these shapes, the number of sides, the number of vertices, the length of the sides, whether or not they're parallel, perpendicular, intersecting, and so on. Um, remember to use words such as horizontal and vertical to describe your shapes as well. 
you are working on page 232, 233, just numbers 3, 5, and 6, and 236, 237, again, questions 3, 5, and 6. Remember, if you have any questions along the way, that you please ask.